Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this tutorial on creating a cloner effect in Wire 7.14. This will be sort of a patch along tutorial um, in which we're going to create a cool cloner. So what is a cloner? A cloner is basically an effect that takes the texture um, coming in. So that would be the clip that the effect is applied to, uh, converts it into a mesh and then copies it many, many times. As you can see in this example, uh, I can move these clones around. So basically that's what we're going to do as well. Resolume, Arena and Avenue already come with uh, three kinds of cloner effects. There is the linear cloner, the radial cloner and the brand new grid cloner effect. And Wire has this little uh, tutorial on creating a cloner, uh, but we're going to start from scratch. So to get started, we first need to create some geometry. For this, we'll use the Rectangle 2D node. Uh, the Rectangle 2D node produces Geometry 2D, which we can put into the Mesh 2D node to create a mesh. Next, we want to give it some kind of a material. For this, we'll use the Texture Material node. Hook that up. And as a texture, we'll use the Texture In node. Basically, we're taking the input of our um, effect. So this would normally be a clip. Uh, convert it to a material and put it onto our mesh. Now, let's use the wire logo and we'll see we're having two issues. First, there's the white background and secondly, the compressed image. To fix the white background, we'll set the blend mode to multiply. And to fix the, the, the compression, because uh, we'll add the patch info node and connect the aspect ratio to the width of the rectangle. And that's how we fix the problem. Because what it was basically happening is that the rectangle has a different aspect ratio, right? It's a square, while the texture in is wider than it is high. So the aspect ratios were off. So basically we're cramming the, this width into the little rectangle. And that basically handles the mesh for us. Uh, let's wrap it up on the on on this side uh, for now, and then we'll get into the actual cloning stuff. From the mesh, we want to go to the render 2D. This will gives us give us a texture, and the texture can go into a texture out. So now we have a clear line coming from a texture in, doing stuff to it, converting it to mesh, and transforming it later on, rendering it back into pixel space, and sending it out. We can add a camera, um, which allows us to zoom in and out. So that's a nice feature to have as well. We'll add some uh, parameters to this later on. So now for the actual cloning bit. First, we want to add a transformation to the node. And this is basically where the magic happens. For example, I could say I want to have a grid pattern and hook it up. And now let's preview the output. And now we have a little grid pattern cloner, right? So this is basically, this produces a, a set of flow two values, a whole list. And we're going to look into an interesting way of generating our own list of flow two values. But this is the basic gist of it. So I was thinking maybe we can do like a grid cloner variation or we can do a linear cloner with more distortion modes. But then I thought like, well, screw it. Let's do something creative. We are going to make a Lisa Juice Curve cloner. Lisa Juice Curve is basically a, a mathematical thingy. But in essence, it's about two sine oscillators making babies and those babies being awesome spiral patterns. So let's make that. For that, we need two sine oscillators that can have a little fight with each other or make babies, depending on the way you want to look at it. These both produce a float value, but the translation wants a float two value. So for this, we'll create a float two, feed an X, feed it a Y, and we've got stuff moving. Uh, I would like to show the reset face just for debugging purposes and expose that so we can reset the face so now they're they're basically synced these two um, and now we want to 
mess around with the face offset because that's where the fun stuff happens. So create a linear node and pop that into the face offset. And I'll copy it. I'm copying, by the way, by clicking on a node, holding down Alt and, and dragging. And face offset here. And now we're getting into the pattern. Uh, let's up the instance counts a little bit. And where the fun happens is basically when you get into integers here and you get these cool curve, curvy spiral patterns happening. Uh, first, we want to control how much clones we have. So I'll expose the size. Now we can say, okay, I want 100 clones or I want 1,000 clones or whatever, whatever. Um, your machine can handle like thousand clones is fine on a, a basic laptop over here. But hundred is fine as well. And I'll set a range. I want to run from eight, eight as a minimum, and up to a hundred. Right, that would be good. You can put in your own values as you see fit. Next, I want to have control over the min and max, uh, or only over the max of the offsets but instead if i expose it i'll get a float in node uh, and in this case i do not want float values because let's up this to 50. Uh, if i have half values like this i will get half patterns as you can see that's open pattern if you like that be my be my guest but i want closed patterns so i need integers so create an int in. I don't really know how to call this parameter. I'll call it count, count uh, A, and I will have a count B as well. Um, the minimum is a one, and the maximum is, uh, let's say, 10. One, I'll count, count. Very difficult word to type, count, count A, count B, into the max. And there we go. Our pattern is being generated. Now I'll probably want to have some control over the amplitude of the oscillators. So I'll expose the this one. I'm not going to call it amplitude. I'm going to call it width because that makes more sense in my head. To go from minus one to one and basically allows you to mirror the pattern if you like. And I'll do the same for the height, for the y value. So I'll call this height, uh, min, max, and minus one. And for the width, I'll take the aspect ratio and multiply it with the width. So this would not work if the, um, yeah, so now we can stretch up to the width the patch, which is nice. Uh, this wouldn't work if the resolution is higher than that is white, but that barely ever happens. So I'm I'm not gonna take that into account for now. But you can if you if you if you need to. All right. Uh, reset face. Probably wanna expose the frequency as well. Uh, I'm gonna give that to both. Um, Say the minimum, I like to have minimax, minimax, uh, probably something like eight, which is really, really fast. Probably four is already good enough. And a minimum of zero. If you want to have a still pattern, that's, that's fine. We're or like really slow. And because we're working in Hertz, you can now set the unit to Hertz. Where are you? There which is just something that looks nice in the in the UI once we get to the arena side of it. So we have control over the amount of clones. We have control over the pattern. We can control the width and the height, the speed. We probably want control over the size of the clones. So for this, I'll create a float in again call it scale and go into here. Yeah, I can make way smaller clones, default it to 0.5, default it to one, 
or maybe 0 0.75, 25, probably do this like a one and two. As a, as a default state, frequency 0 0.25 is default, just the just, just, uh, default, uh, default settings. I think we're getting pretty close to finishing this up. Uh, the zoom, I wanna expose the zoom as well. And for this, we're gonna do a little bit fancy because I don't like having a zoom running from zero to one. Um, that does not make sense in my head. I want a percentage for this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale from zero to 200%. We're setting it to percentage, which is nice. And then the zoom, well, that doesn't work right because we're, we're now like scaling to a factor of almost 80. So we'll insert a divide node divided by 100. And now we have scaling from basically zero all the way up to 200%, which I think just looks nice. But feel free to use other values if you see fit. And then the rendering, the texture, I think this looks all fine and dandy. So let's save this. Lisa Juice, I don't even know how to spell that. I'll just call it Curvy, Curvy Cloner. And set it to effect, save it, and I'll see you on the Arena side. All right, here we are in Arena. I've applied the curvy cloner effect to this cool clip from the ethnic three pack. And let's have a little play with it. Let's see what kind of cool patterns we can, uh, we can create with it. Maybe I'm just using way too much clones. Yeah, that looks cool. Maybe a little bit more close. It's kind of cool that these skulls are like semi-translucent. Getting them into this pattern. Yeah, it's a pretty cool effect. Make them really fast. You can get into oscillation kind of stuff. I can imagine using the shaper source, for example, to create uh, um, like um, oscilloscope kind of effects. I'll just make a move very slowly. Very wide. And I think that looks pretty cool. I hope this tutorial gives you some insight on how to create cloners because the basic gist is always just uh, taking a texture, converting it to a material and projecting it onto some geometry. And then the whole transformation part is where your imagination or your mathematical knowledge uh, can go rampant. Some cool things to look into are the a cloner effect that is or cloner tutorial that is already built into wire as well as the grid cloner effect in arena which is actually built in wire so you can take a look how that is made as well i hope you learned something from this tutorial if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comments below and i'll see you in the next one